Hello to all of my friends from near and far. I want to welcome you all to another edition of the National Portrait Gallery Storytime program called Introducing. In this program, we share the stories of the people who have helped shape the history of the United States through our portraits. Now, this month, uh, May, is National Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And in honor of this, we're going to be looking at a portrait of community organizer and human rights activist, Yuri Kochiyama. Known as Sister Yuri, Kochiyama was an advocate for various civil rights causes in her lifetime and organized supporters from different races and different identities to protest injustice and discrimination. Now this photograph is by artist Corky Lee and is from 1980. It shows Kochiyama participating in a restaurant workers protest organized by the Chinese Staff and Workers Association in New York City's Chinatown. In this portrait, we can see an adult female shown in left-facing three-quarter view. She wears glasses, a dark-colored knit hat, a coat over a light-colored dress and light-colored shoes. She is holding a large sign that reads, Rehire the waiters immediately! And is followed by other protesters uh, holding signs both in English and Chinese. There are also buildings in the background. Now this person uh, was actually born Mary Yuriko Nakahara in San Pedro, California on May 19th, 1921. So almost 100 years ago. Her father owned a fish and marine supply business and was prominent in the Japanese American community. Kochiyama grew up as a part of a generation of Nisei. Now, Nisei is a Japanese word that is used to describe Japanese children born in the United States to Japanese-born immigrants. Now, when Mary was a child, she was elected to student council at her high school, um, wrote a column for the San Pedro News Pilot, and was also, um, and later became a Sunday school teacher at the local Presbyterian church. She went on to study journalism at Compton Community College. Now, her life, along with the lives of thousands of other Japanese Americans, was extremely disrupted during World War II when they were forced to live in incarceration, sometimes called internment camps. They were forced to be away from their homes, their businesses, and their loved ones. Yuri and her family were forced to leave their home in California and were moved to Jerome, Arkansas in an internment camp. Now, while she was at the internment camp, she organized other young women to write letters um, to the thousands of Japanese American GIs who were serving their country during the war. Her time in this internment camp inspired her life of activism and her need for something like this to never happen again. She was released in 1944 to help run a USO center for the soldiers in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And this is where she met uh, Bill Kochiyama, um, who was a soldier, um, and they would later get married. Uh, Bill and Mary would spend the rest of their lives in service to others. Now, years later, the 1960s was a really important time for her. First, she and her husband, Bill, uh, were living in New York City, but moved to a neighborhood called Harlem um, in New York City, which was really vibrant with activism at the time. During this time, she also started participating in movements for civil and human rights, ethnic studies, and against the war in Vietnam. During this time, she also founded Asian Americans for Action, and she sought to build a more political movement that would link itself, right? An Asian American movement that would link itself to the struggle that many African Americans were experiencing at the same time. Kochiyama believed in the power of solidarity. Now, solidarity is a feeling of unity between people who have the same interests and goals. Now, she believed and understood the importance of people, especially those with shared experiences, the power that can happen when these people come together and meet their goals. Now, another thing happened to her in the 1960s, which is that she met another activist, Malcolm X. Kochiyama and Malcolm X first met at a protest in 1963 and were friends until his untimely passing in 1965. He was a big influence in her life and changed how she lived as an activist. In an interview, she said that Malcolm really changed her life. She was heading in one direction, integration, and he was going in another total liberation, and he opened her eyes. Now, another thing that happened to her in the 1960s is that she began to call herself Yuri, so no longer 
referring to herself as Mary in a way to identify with her Japanese ancestry. Now, after the 1960s, Kochiyama was incredibly influential and very involved in social justice movements. She campaigned against the Vietnam War. She worked to get reparations for Japanese Americans for their, for their time in internment and continuously fought for the rights of political prisoners. Until the end of her life, she was very, very dedicated to this work. She once said that she didn't wake up and decide to become an activist but couldn't help notice the inequities. It was all around her. Now, Yuri Kochiyama lived her life not just noticing injustice and inequities, but did the work to try to change it. Now, sadly, we've reached the end of this week's introducing. I hope you enjoyed learning about this amazing person as much as I have. And I can encourage you all to continue learning about Yuri Kochiyama. Until then, we hope to see you next Wednesday for a new story.